life is bad for the planet. Most of us know that. What's less known, however, is that ditching hamburgers isn't going to make much of a difference because ground beef isn't the problem. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Before we get to the environment, let's get the health stuff out of the way first. The potentially unhealthful effects of eating red meat are so small that they may be of little clinical significance for many people. This finding, recently released in multiple articles in the Annals of Internal Medicine, is sure to be controversial. It should certainly not be interpreted as licensed to eat as much meat as you like. But the scope of the work is expansive, and it confirms prior work that the evidence against meat isn't nearly as solid as many seem to believe. While I had no role in the research, I did co-write a commentary about it in the journal. Red meat has been vilified more than almost any other food, yet studies have shown that while moderation is important, meat can certainly be part of a healthy diet. This doesn't mean that there aren't other reasons to eat less meat. Some point out that the way in which cattle are raised and consumed are unethical. Others argue that eating red meat is terrible for the environment. Recently, meat substitutes have emerged as a possible solution. But the promise is much greater than the reality, at least so far. Burger King and other fast food chains are trying out Impossible Foods burgers as a vegan answer to beef. And we should dispense, as we did last week, that this is healthier in any way. The Impossible Whopper is 630 calories versus a traditional Whopper 660. It also contains similar amounts of saturated fat and protein and more sodium and carbohydrates. And no one should think they're improving their health by making the switch. What about the environment argument? Almost 30% of the world's ice-free land is used to raise livestock. We grow a lot of crops to feed animals, and we cut down a lot of forests to do that. But beef, far more than pork or chicken, contributes to environmental harm, in part because it requires much more land. The greenhouse gas production per serving of chicken or pork is about 20% that of a serving of beef. Cows also put out an enormous amount of methane, causing almost 10% of anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions and contributing to climate change. There's been a lot of hope that Beyond Meat's pea protein, or Impossible Burger's soy, could serve as beef burger substitutes, reducing the need for cows. That's unlikely to happen, according to Sarah Tabor, a crop scientist and food system specialist. Ground beef is not the problem. Steak is. I'm quoting her here. There's no profit to be made in ground beef. That all comes either from leftover parts once cattle have been slaughtered for more expensive cuts, or from dairy cattle that have outlived their usefulness. If everyone gave up hamburgers tomorrow, the same number of cows would still be raised and need to be fed. In other words, to improve the environment by reducing the number of cows slaughtered, we'd need to find a way to replace the many other cuts of beef Americans enjoy. No lab and no company is close to that. To greatly reduce the reliance on cows, we'd also need to wean ourselves from our high level of milk consumption. The increasing use of alternative milks like oats or soy could help, but the dairy industry still dominates. And the dairy industry's claims about the health of its product are somewhat overblown. Milk isn't nearly as necessary for health as many believe, as we've talked about before. Some companies are researching ways to replace the more complex cuts of meat that drive the market. These companies aren't replacing beef with substitutes. They're trying to grow it in the lab using stem cells. Tamar Haspel, who writes on food policy for The Washington Post, has said such advances are not likely coming soon, nor is it clear that they would have an overall positive impact unless we are sure that this meat can be made in a more energy efficient way than we can raise cattle. If meat substitutes won't help in the short run, other things still might. Some believe that raising cattle on pastures from birth until a slaughter might sequester carbon in the soil better than having cows finish their growth on feedlots. Researchers at the University of Florida argue that it can also be profitable for farmers in warmer climates to do just that. It would require the cattle industry to make significant changes as well as to relocate, and it seems unlikely they'd be willing to do that. Dr. Tabor says that grass-feeding cattle without grain is the norm in New Zealand, but almost no one in the United States does it. It's also worth pointing out that it would probably take longer to raise cows this way, giving them more time to make methane. Other new developments could help with that problem. Some are proposed farming insects to make animal feed, and feeding seaweed to cows, even in small amounts, can significantly reduce their methane burps. One problem with seaweed is that the component that helps reduce methane emissions is classified as a carcinogen by the Environmental Protection Agency. It's present in small amounts in seaweed, though, and humans have been eating seaweed safely for a long time. As Dr. Tabor told me, picture a seaweed farm the size of Manhattan. 
Until people are truly ready to reduce consumption of dairy or consumption of higher-end beef cuts or to commit to raising cattle differently, it seems unlikely that any of the changes with respect to ground beef will make a significant environmental difference in the near future. That doesn't mean there's nothing we can do. I asked Dr. Tabor what we might advise people right now to help with the environment. She said, who needs steak when there's bacon and fried chicken? Hey, did you enjoy this episode? Always helps if you subscribe or like down below. You should also watch last week's episode where we went into the details of why these meat substitutes aren't necessarily better for your health. We'd also like you to consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage. We're like our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and our Surgeon Admiral Sam. You too can support the show, help make it bigger and better.